Hello and welcome to part 7 of the walkthrough of L, a mathematical adventure for the BBC Micro. Um, we have come to the telephone room, or the creeper room, and that's where we were previously. And you may remember previously on L, a mathematical adventure, we tried to move the chest by saying move chest, that wouldn't work. Um, and in fact, you can move the chest, and this is how you do it. You drop the bottle. You drop the file. You drop the ore. You remember how to type English words. You drop the ore. And you drop the ladder. And then you move the chest. And in fact, it turns out that you were carrying too much to move the chest. A degree of ver verisimilitude which has been hitherto conspicuously lacking from the game. Why suddenly we need realism and need to be unburdened, I don't know. That's kind of strange and odd. Of course, it's forcing us to drop all these objects. We can then pick them up again uh, to go down the trap door, which suggests to me that that wasn't exactly the most intuitive puzzle in the game. Why suddenly do we need to remember that it's physically harder to move a an oaken chest when you're carrying a lot of stuff. I don't know. I don't know. But such are the vagaries and the whimsicality of L. Oh dear. Well, you know, we can't complain. You are in a... We can, and I have, actually. So what am I talking about? You're in a room containing a heavy black oak chest, you see, with intricate carvings. And I wanted to see if I could read the carvings. Taking any bets on whether I'll be able to do this or not? It doesn't understand carvings, of course not. Right. We are now going down. There's a ladder. That's not the rope ladder. That's a ladder which is leading down into a cellar now. We've revealed that by moving, moving the chest in a very physically realistic way. Let's go down. <clears throat> You're in a cellar. A ladder leads up to the room above, and there's a door to the north. There's a notice on the door. Cellar maze. Strictly no admittance by order of the Drogo Central Committee. Now, this is a maze. It's a maze. A maze it is. And what to say about mazes in adventure games? Many people hate them. Many people like the challenge of mapping them. And of course, the standard way of mapping a maze, in which every room has the same description, is to drop objects in the various rooms and thereby create a difference in the description of each room as you move into it so that you can distinguish one room from another and thus map out the maze. Otherwise you're just wandering around from room to room, um, all of the rooms look the same and you you get completely confused about where you are and where you can go and does the maze in fact twist around and you know are you um, where you think you are, or has a passage, if you move east from one room in, into another room, does west from the second room take you back to the first room, or has the passage curved in between the two rooms? You don't know. And in fact, in this game, the map is as shown here. So in fact, there are no, there are no curved passages between rooms, and it's a straightforward grid. So that does make things simpler. And it also kind of makes you feel that the whole exercise is slightly pointless. This, by the way, is a map of the layout of L, the castle. Shall we call it Castle L? Why not? Um, and it's on a website made by Nick Murdoch, who has, um, I'll provide links to this, and he's made a very good map of the geography of L, and you can 
mouse over the various floors of the game on his website and the map will change accordingly and show you the relevant floor and uh, it's all very useful in fact um, to orient yourself um, if you want to cheat as I am and here is where we are now um, level minus two um, and as you can see actually looking over the geography of this game it's um, quite involved and that as I said is one of the challenges of this game mapping it out and figuring out um, how to get from place to place so thank you to Nick Murdoch who made the map and um, it's very useful so thank you also of course to Darren Izzard brother of Eddie who has written the walkthrough that I'm using and I'm now going to use it to get through the maze rather quickly. You're in the cellar maze in a square room which is lit by a dim light bulb. There are doors to the north, south, east and west. Okay, we're going east and you're in a cellar maze in a square room which is lit by a dim light bulb. There are doors to the north, south, east and west. And in fact, it, every room is like this. So it's tricky, confusing and you need to map it very carefully using the procedure I mentioned earlier or use a walkthrough to cheat. You're outside the palace at the bottom of a flight of stone steps. A door leads into the palace. We're going up. You've entered a large courtyard paved with square slabs, many covered with moss and lichen. Some stone steps lead down to a door into the palace. In the centre of the courtyard lies a turtle basking in a shaft of sunlight. As you move towards the turtle, he waves a flipper to attract your attention. Don't approach me directly, he warns. Don't approach me. Aren't they very slow? And I'm not going to do that. Um, I'd like to help you, he says, lowering his voice. I'd like to help you, he says, lowering his voice. We can meet somewhere, provided that it is I who catch up with you. Uh, strictly speaking, there should be I who catches up with you, because who is a third-person pronoun? Not, many, not very many people know that, or realise that, or care. Also, he says, lowering his voice even further, the Drogos have programmed me to respond to your moves in a special way. Try moving about a little. The turtle is sitting on a slab, which is four squares to the north of you, and six squares to the east of you. So, does it tell you here how this works. Now it kind of says, um, I've just read this but I've just realised I don't take it in when I'm trying to read it carefully or stupidly with silly voices. Um, the Drogos have programmed me to respond to your moves in a special way. So that's all you know. So let's try moving in some way. Let's try moving north. As you move one square to the north, the turtle moves two squares to the north. Now let's try moving south. As you move one square to the south, the turtle moves two squares to the south. And because the turtle is to the north of us, we have to get him to move south, to meet us. And the only way to do that is to move south ourselves, several times, and then he'll be on a level with us, because he moves two squares for every one square we move. This turtle, by the way, I think is significant, because it is may be reminiscent or intended to um, suggest a program, I believe it was called Logo, was it a kind of programming language that you used on the Beeb and possibly other computers to move an actual device, a physical device around on the floor, a device that was connected up to the BBC Micro computer and that you could move around using the Logo programming language, am I inventing all of this? Um, Perhaps because the walkthrough says it's a snail. And clearly it's not a snail, it's a turtle. We've just read that it's a turtle, and it says they're a turtle. So that's confusing. Perhaps Darren Izzard's memory is faulty, and it was a slip of the tongue, or the pen, and or the keyboard, and um, he's just made a mistake. Anyway, um, there we are. So let's move south. Turtle moves two squares to the south. Let's move south again. And let's just check where we are. Uh, the turtle is sitting on a slab which is two squares to the north and six squares to the east of you. So if we move south again, we should now 
be on a level with the turtle. Um, and we are, because the turtle is now one square to the north and six squares to the east of you. Oh no, actually, so we're not. So we're now um, six, yes, yeah, so now the turtle's on a level with us and is just six squares away. So he is to the east of us, so we need to go west and west and west and west and west and west. The turtle sidles up to you to meet you. He gives you a small rusty key which he was concealing in his shell. Then he scurries back to the centre of the courtyard and shuts his eyes. So the turtle moved two squares for every one square we moved and it was just a simply a matter of moving enough times to get him to meet us. Um, the Drogos are not very cunning opponents in this game, in this battle of wills. Uh, so we have a key, a small rusty key, which was in his shell, apparently. Must have been painful. Um, poor chap. Right. We are now going to go back down at the bottom of the stone steps. And we need to go back through the maze, unfortunately. Um... We're going to go south, west, west through the maze. And suddenly you're in the cellar maze and on the ground is a perfect sphere made of polished ebony. And lo and behold, there is also a Drogo robot guard opposite you. He's carrying a huge butterfly net and emblazoned across his front is the number 64. Now, this is interesting. Because what I'm going to do is try to ignore him for one move and get the sphere. Can I get the sphere? Have I got the sphere? Have I? Did I get the sphere before he caught me? No, I didn't. Um, how annoying. I didn't intend to do things in this order. Anyway, what happened was he caught me. And I'm going to rewind now. I just rewound the game using a save state, which I mentioned before. Uh, the BBM emulator allows you to save the state of the machine and then reload that state later on, which is handy because it's like saving a game, but uh, more convenient. Uh, as you can save multiple save games at different points through your playing of the game. And the reason I did that is because I didn't actually want to be captured at this point. It is actually useful and interesting to get captured by one of these Drogo robot guards, but I don't want to do it just yet, I don't think. How do you avoid getting captured? Well, the robot guard has the number 64 emblazoned across his front, and the key to this, as you discover if you're captured, is to type the square root of the number on the front of the Drogo robot guard. And the guard gives a wail of terror and disappears out of sight. And you're free to go about your business. So get Sphere. And I will get captured later on just to show you what it's like and what happens, because it's kind of interesting. So we got the Sphere. Let's carry on with the walkthrough. Uh, that's the main reason I didn't want to get captured. It's kind of annoying to get captured in the maze because you have to then navigate through it later on, and uh, oh, it's a nightmare, it's a nightmare. Uh, north, west, south, we're still in the maze, we're going through the maze, uh, let's get out of the maze. You're back in the telephone room, the chest has been moved to reveal a trapdoor in the floor, yes, that annoying chest. Um, let's leave this place, and travel through the castle, at tremendous speed, uh, this is actually not too bad. The speed of the beeb, I think when there's some difficult computation to do, um, can be rather annoying. But uh, in this case, it goes quite quickly because we're just moving from room to room. And at this point, I shall pause again and see you in the next part of the walkthrough.